Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today, and I hope you're doing well. We'll begin with SpaceX's Starship rocket, which is about to use the giant arm, Mechazilla, followed by SpaceX's next mission, about to take place on the 28th of August. Then we'll have updates on Blue Origin's aggressive attempt on the case against NASA and SpaceX, and at the end we'll discuss about satellite images from Afghanistan captured by Maxar. So let's begin with our first update. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk informed this month about the company's plans to use a giant arm dubbed Mechazilla in order to move its new Starship rocket into position. The aim is to get a grip on new Starship in multiple ways. Also in the upcoming events, the arm might help in catching the ship after landing. This can help in launching the same Starship multiple times per day, which again strengthens the chances of achieving the goal of City on Mars around 2050. The new vessel could be the tallest and most powerful rocket to fly till date. The Mechazilla will add colors to the already amazing sight of the flight and make it more magnificent. This feature is going to be quite phenomenal for the company. Starship is capable of sending over 100 tons into space at a time and is fully reusable. It's designed to support all of the current missions as well as is aiming for several larger goals. The name Mechazilla is coined by Musk himself, which is most likely a reference to Mecha Godzilla from the Godzilla movies. Launch towers are ordinary for rockets, but SpaceX has greater plans in store. Musk clearly claimed in December last year about how the company plots to use it to catch the super heavy booster while it approaches towards Earth. The CEO also suggested how the tower can catch and move the rocket back into position. This will help in reusing the rockets faster. In March 2020, he said he wanted Starship to be able to fly three times a day. It's estimated that the city will require one million tons of cargo. If each ship carries 100 tons, SpaceX will need 10,000 flights over the next 30 years. Let's move to our next update. SpaceX is about to mount the Dragon on top of Falcon 9 rocket at NASA's Kennedy Space Center and launch. After Boeing failed to launch its Starliner, NASA announced that SpaceX's next mission to the International Space Station will take place on the 28th of August. If everything goes as per plan, the Dragon will take off at 3.37 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the scheduled date. SpaceX is currently equipping its vehicle with supplies and scientific experiments. Boeing's aim was to demonstrate how its Starliner, CST-100, could reach the ISS, land properly, and make its return to Earth. The mission, however, was aborted at the very last moment, owing to some issues with the spacecraft's valves resulting in bringing Starliner back to the factory. The company now is trying to figure out the cause of the corrosion in the propulsion system. SpaceX, on the other hand, is also heading towards the ISS, but has been backed up by remarkable experiments and equipment. Among many new technologies involved, there is a microgravity robotic arm. This arm, developed by Gitai Japan, will be put inside the pressurized Bishop airlock. Someday there will be an entire robot design working in the fields of spacecrafts. Another remote-controlled drug delivery system is developed by Faraday NICE, which can lead to a replacement of currently used infusion pumps. Infusion pumps are prone to electromechanical failures and double dosing. The new system, however, is smaller in size and has no moving mechanical components. On the other hand, the Materials International Space Station Experiment, 15 NASA, will check the component's performance in low Earth orbit. The durability of concrete, fiberglass, solar cells, radiation protection materials, and spacecraft materials are all being checked. Out of all the other accommodations, another extraordinary item present in the SpaceX Dragon will be an eye test for the astronauts. The test is designed to diagnose space-associated neuroocular syndrome, SANS. SANS is often a result of extended space stay. Keeping in mind longer future events, 
a way to check this problem is required and thus this new method is being included. Let's move to our next update regarding Blue Origin's latest lawsuit. At this point, we all know about Blue Origin's lawsuit against NASA. The matter is pretty much heated up now as Blue Origin still chooses to sue the agency regarding its contract with SpaceX. Blue Origin made this clear when it said, We firmly believe that the issues identified in this procurement and its outcomes must be addressed to restore fairness, create competition, and ensure a safe return to the moon for America. Last time, on July 30th, the U.S. Government Accountability Office, in short GAO, wholeheartedly rejected Blue Origin's protest, but it was not enough to break the company's ego. This Monday, NASA said that Blue Origin's lawsuit is being reviewed. With our partners, we will go to the moon and stay to enable science investigations, develop new technology, and create high-paying jobs for the greater good and in preparation to send astronauts to Mars," the agency said in a statement. Space editor Eric Berger was analyzing the whole situation. In recent days, NASA has been talking to Blue Origin in an effort to mediate the HLS issue, thus avoiding this next legal step. Apparently, those talks broke down and Blue Origin has escalated its Scorched Earth campaign against the space agency, he tweeted on Monday. This will further inflame internal tensions at Blue Origin, which are rising. Many employees are super disappointed in this tactic. It will also make other commercial space companies wary of partnering and make it super difficult to win any federal contracts in the future. It looks like Blue Origin desperately wants its lawsuit to succeed. In order to do so, the company will have to go all out and convince a federal judge that NASA's decision to award SpaceX was flawed. It depends on Blue Origin how they'll do the job. Regarding that, another space reporter, Michael Baylor, tweeted, Blue Origin is doing its best to ensure that it will be remembered for delaying our return to the lunar surface, and the immensely complex and high-risk lander will be remembered for the opposite. In a worst-case scenario, if the judge wishes to take the side with Blue Origin and proceed with the case, then it could temporarily cease the work on SpaceX's human landing system contract. But now, let's not move into the conclusion and wait for the result. We'll keep you updated. Moving to our last update regarding release of satellite images by Maxar Technologies showing crowd surging on Afghanistan's airport. Recently, after the fall of Kabul before the Taliban on the 15th of August, hundreds of people were spotted hurrying towards the Hamid Karzai International Airport. The size of the crowd made it visible even to satellites. Satellite imagery shows that those people were rushing to the airport to secure a flight going out from Afghanistan. According to a report, the runway was crowded with civilians and some deaths had followed as some individuals had clung themselves to the aircraft during takeoff. Some sources stated, Some Afghans tried to cling on to departing planes. Others crowded the tarmac after security lines were breached. By nightfall, all flights from the Kabul airport were suspended. The report says nearly seven people were killed. Planet, a satellite imaging company, has recently shown two satellite images of the turmoil in the airport which showed crowds arriving at the airport. Maxar Technologies, a commercial provider, had also shown their satellite images of the crowds. Maxar stated, Security forces can be seen near one of the airport's main runways, attempting to prevent crowds of people from moving toward other aircraft and from blocking flight operations. Hundreds of people can also be seen at several of the airport perimeter gates and at intersections nearby. John Kirby, a representative of the Pentagon, said, We've certainly seen all the dramatic video coming from the airport today, and we obviously don't want anyone else to get hurt. So we're going to work methodically in coming hours to restore a safe and secure environment so that air operations can resume. The Pentagon also confirmed that all flights taken off on the afternoon of the 16th of August from Kabul have been grounded. Moreover, the military has also cleared out the crowd. President Joe Biden stated, I'm President of the United States of America, and the buck stops with me. 
I'm deeply saddened by the facts we face now, but I do not regret my decision. Some recent reports say Biden had also authorized sending in thousands of additional troops into Afghanistan in the upcoming days. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.